Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and today, obviously judging by the title of the video, we're going to be going over the running costs on the Rebel, and then most importantly, right over here, the running costs on the Shelby as well, but let's just get right into the video. And then as always, if you guys are stopping in for the first time, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. This channel is mostly about doing reviews on cars, but I do some videos on my personal vehicles as well. If you're new to the channel, I have a 2018 Ram Rebel, and then I have a 2017 Shelby GT350. And then today we are actually going to be going and washing the Shelby here. It's super, super dirty, kind of hard to see because of the low light. The Rebel I actually washed yesterday, so first time I've had this truck clean <laughs> in a while, but we've got to move the Rebel out. I'm actually just gonna put it on the rocks over there so that we can take the Shelby out washer, and then we are going to take it up the canyon so that we can do the main part of the video. Oh. Just gotta hop right in. Start her all up and don't judge the interior of the truck. I haven't cleaned that in a long time either, but let's just take her over to move her. Of course it had music on. One thing that I do love about this truck is the graphics on that backup camera, as you guys can see, are just phenomenal. It makes parking and backing up and all that so, so easy. And then we actually are going to pop the truck into off-road mode. So that'll take just a moment. That's with the air suspension. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Rebels, they come standard with air suspension for the generation that I have. Mine's a 2018, like I said. And then you can see we're just popping in the rocks right over here. But yeah, they come standard with the air suspension. And so basically the truck has like little airbags that can raise and lower. Just gotta make sure we're in the right place here on the rocks. Perfect. But yeah, they have airbags that like raise and lower on the truck and so then it makes it so that you have a little bit extra ground clearance. That being said though, what I actually have found is that when I'm in the off-road mode, like I'll park it like on stuff like that with the off-road mode, but when I actually go off-roading, I actually off-road it in normal mode because in the off-road mode, it's at the top of the airbags and it's super, super stiff suspension wise. So it's actually better to off-road in normal mode so that the truck isn't so stiff when you are going off-road. But now that we're done with that, let's pop over, hop into the Shelby and take it out to get it cleaned. Now this is the best part. She sounds a little bit angry in the morning. Sometimes the cold startups are hit and miss. This one was pretty good, but let's put her over into sport mode. Normal suspension so she doesn't beat us up and we're good on gas. So we just actually got here to the wash to clean up the Shelby and all that, but this is actually crazy. You guys have to see this. You see the Shelby's not like a supercar or anything like that, but look how like it's almost like it's not scraping the ground, but like it's so, so close. So like if you had like an actual supercar, you would not be able to use this wash at all, but let's just get right into washing Shelby so we can take her up the canyon. Man, she looks so, so much better after we get her all cleaned up. But now we're going to take her up the canyon, get a little bit of a fun drive, and then we will go over all of the running costs associated with owning the Shelby GT350 and then the truck, you know, at 21 years old. The biggest question a lot of you guys are gonna have is actually insurance costs. And so once we get up there, we'll go over all of that. Keeping it under 55 though, of course. And uh, we are in Mexico, as always. Oh, got a little bit of tire squeal right there. Yeah, this is what this car was made for, is doing these canyon runs like this because it is such a blast. see here we've got this little Honda in front of us they're just uh, making things a little bit sad for us they're going like 20 miles an hour 
But we are getting up to a passing lane soon, so don't worry. We're gonna get past them, guys. So we just got up here to the top of the canyon and it's kind of cool contrast to be able to see the Shelby with the snow in the background. So now like I promised while we're at the top of the canyon we're going to go kind of like over all of the costs on everything in this video but yeah I'm just kind of obsessed with how it looks in the mountains up here and yeah there's still a ton of snow. It is the middle of May and we still have snow everywhere and this is actually kind of cool so there's like this giant drop off down here. So you can see it goes down into like the ski resort area. So good thing that I didn't fall off when I was parking over here, but yeah, it's beautiful up here right now. So first off, we will actually start on the truck that, well, it's gonna be all the way down there somewhere. And in terms of running costs on that, the insurance cost actually isn't that much. So I actually called before I did this video. Um, I'm paying just over 1300 bucks a year for insurance on the truck. So you can do the math, it's just over hundred bucks a month, which is not bad by any means. And then in terms of the lease on that one, like I said, that I am doing a lease on that. It's a little bit easier for tax purposes with the business and all that to be able to write off a lease. You can write off a purchase, but it's a little bit easier for me to do the lease on that. Um, lease payments on that are actually only 436 a month, which is not bad at all for a brand new truck. Now for the part that you have all been waiting for, and that is on the Shelby. So insurance on that actually isn't a lot either. So it's just over 1400 bucks a year, which again, you can do the math. That's going to be just over a hundred bucks a month for insurance cost on that. Now the part that's going to confuse a lot of you is going to be on the payment aspect. So my minimum payment, which I don't pay, I pay a lot more than that, is actually $782 a month. And if that sounds high, it's because I went for a super short term. If I am going to finance a vehicle, I'm going to go for really short term just to keep money, be able to use it with other stuff. That's why I do the financing, but then I don't want to pay in a vehicle forever. So I always go for really, really short term. And I recommend that for anyone that does finance a vehicle. If you're going to get something like that, definitely don't do a long term, do a short term. If you can't do a short term, you can't afford the car. But what I actually pay per month towards it is actually 1600 bucks a month. And the reason that I do that is I'm trying to pay it off a lot quicker and I'm actually going to be going a little bit more aggressive with that. I'm gonna jump it up to about 2400 bucks a month shortly. And that's just to get it paid off now. Um, finances have changed recently and so I'm kind of becoming more aggressive, get that paid off soon so that we can add something a little bit different to the garage soon, but more on that a little bit later. Now that we're done going over everything, we're gonna head back down the canyon. Probably not gonna film that part because I'm just gonna mob it all the way down. Obviously, always keeping it under 55 wherever we are going. And if you are wondering, a lot of the camera shots have been made possible by Nastasha over here. She's just chilling <laughs> on the ground. Awesome little sister to have. But we're gonna head back down and then we're gonna cap things off for the video today. I had to cut it short filming up there. Every like five seconds I tried to film up there, there was like another person that wanted to take a picture of the Shelby and like all this kind of stuff. So came back down so that we could basically wrap things up on the video. If you guys are wondering why the insurance rates are so low compared to probably what you hear on the internet, it has to do with a number of factors. So first off, some insurance companies actually take credit into play with insurance. So. The better your credit, the better your rates, because they know you're gonna be good on making your insurance payments. And then the other thing is driving history. I've got a good driving history as well. And then how many things you put on their policy. We've got a ton of things under the insurance policy, and so that also helps kind of lower the rates because there's so many different things that are itemized on the policy as well. And so those are kind of all the things that come into play with insurance and all that and determining the rates. But I hope that was somewhat informative for everyone. You know, if you are gonna be purchasing the type of car like this, 
always check on insurance make sure that you can afford all of that stuff and like i said if you can't afford to pay cash for the car or go super short term of the financing wouldn't recommend doing it um, these cars some of them are pretty good value wise but a lot of the times cars like this will depreciate pretty heavily and so if you aren't paying it down really quickly you're just not going to be able to stay in line with everything that all being said though i really appreciate everyone for watching if you are stopping for the first time again i'd really appreciate if you subscribe it always helps out the channel but i will see all of you in that next video